in this video, what I would like to do is talk about a start screen. So one of the first things is I used a graphics program to draw a start room. And what I did is just simply put the titles, some pictures, any, any graphics program is fine uh, to use to draw this. Uh, we use some different websites, one called Cool Text uh, to make some uh, interesting text, but there's all sorts of different um, places to get text and images and that sort of thing. So once I drew it, I right clicked on background, create a background, and I loaded up this background that I made. The next thing I did is I need to make a start room. And so to make a start room to put this background in, I'm going to right click and create a room. And um, it's on here, I'm going to rename the room so I remember what this is, and I'll call it Start Room. Um, and you'll notice that Room 0 and then Start Room is the second room. Well, Start Room's got to be the first room. So when the game starts, I'm going to put Start Room on top. Now, one of the important things to remember is in my game, I'm just trying to keep everything the same. So when I made the graphic, um, I'm using views of 0 to 640, so a width of 640 and a height of 480. So it made sense when I drew the graphic that I, I drew a graphic about the same size, 640 by 480. So now in my start room, I'm going to go to backgrounds and I'm going to put the um, background I drew, the, the game background. Okay, so now if I press play, it would load this room up and we'd see the um, background that I drew but nothing would happen because you'd be stuck in this room. How would I get to the main game, which is room zero? And so what I need to do is I need to make an object and I'm gonna call the object, uh, object start uh, game. And um, we don't need a sprite, uh, but I forgot to add something to my graphic. So a little title I made um, so I'm going to put a sprite, but normally you wouldn't need to put a sprite in here. The only event I need to do is keyboard any key. So any key that's pressed, uh, what I want to do is I want to go to the next room. So I want to start the game. Okay. So there we go. That's all we need to do. And then I simply need to go to objects in this start room and I need to make sure I put the start game object in here. Um, uh, like I didn't. So I didn't put my name in it. So now you can see by Mr. Poi. Uh, I don't know why I put Poi's, but anyhow, I'm not going to redo the graphic right now. Okay, so here is my um, start room. Uh, why do we have a start room? And the reason we have a start room is because I want to have a system to keep track of lives. And I want to display those lives in my heads up display um, just at the top of the screen here. So to do that, um, what I need to do is make an object that has lives. And we've done this before in other games. So take a look at my video on the space shooter game for a game controller. And you'll see a very similar thing that we uh, are going to do. Now for the game controller, um, although it doesn't have a sprite, um, what it has to be is visible because I'm going to use the draw event to draw my heads up display um, with my lives and my coin counter. So I have to make it visible and I also have to make it persistent. And just a reminder, what does persistent mean? And what persistent means is that the create event um, happens obviously in the room that it's created, but in the rooms where it's not created, it's still going to exist. This object is going to exist in each and every room that's out there which is great because I want the object to exist in each and every room. So, but I don't want the create event to keep creating because what I'm going to do in the create event is I'm going to go here to lives and I'm going to give myself three lives. So what would happen is every time the room would restart, I'd have three lives and I wouldn't lose lives. And so that would be a little bit of a problem because I'd keep getting three lives every time I died, I'd have three lives again. So to have lives, I need to do that. The other thing I'm going to do here is I need a coin counter. And right now I only have, there's lots of different ways I could do it, but
But to keep track of how many coins, what I'm going to do is in game controller um, objects, I've got game controller here, I'm going to create a variable called coins. So and this is going to keep track of how many coins I have. So right now when the game starts, I'm going to have zero coins. Great. The next thing I want to do is I want to have an event when I have no more lives because presumably you're going to run out of lives and I want the game to be over. So what I do in this case is I press other and there's a special thing that says no more lives. And so when I run out of lives, what I'm going to do is I'll display uh, the high scoreboard and I'll restart the game, um, which is sort of what we've done on virtually every game that we've made. So when I run out of lives, you'll see the high score and the game will restart. Okay, so how do we lose a life? Let's go to Mario Dies. And in Mario Dies, what we had is in the step event, um, we previously had, if Y is larger than 600, that means Mario's out of the room, uh, we lose a life and restart the room. And then because the game controller is going to be in the room, uh, it's going to um, see if there's no more lives. And if there's no more lives, the game ends. Otherwise, the room just restarts. Okay, let's go to coins. Now I want to have a coin counter. So in object coin, what happened is I played a sound and I destroyed the instance. But I also want to say, hey, I've got some coins now. So, and I think we might've had score. Um, so you could put score if you want, 10 points or something every time you get a coin. Uh, however you do your game, you don't have to do this. But what is really important, what I really wanna do in here is I wanna, uh, use a variable and the variable I'm going to use is called game controller because that's the object where the variable exists and the variable name was called coins and I want to say that there's a value of one that's added to my coins so now in my game controller you can see I've got one more coin Super. So now um, I've got another coin. The last thing I want to do is have my game controller display how many coins I've got. So another event needs to happen, and that event is going to be the draw event. And so in the draw event, I'm going to draw lots of things. And so I'll go to the draw tab in particular, uh, where you'll see, uh, well, actually, no, I'm not going to go to the draw tab just yet. Uh, first thing I'm, I'm going to do is draw the number of lives I have. So the number of lives I'm going to draw, and because we're using views, let's go back here before I do that. Let's go uh, take a look at my room here, and we're using views. And you can see it says enable the use of views and visible uh, 0 to 640 and follow object Mario. So we're going to have views. So I can't just say draw at position 16 um, because that is going to change because later on in the game, I mean, it might be at 5,000. X might be 5,000. I might be, you know, way over here or something. So to, to draw at a specific spot, let's go to my game controller draw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the lives. The X coordinate is going to be view, V-I-E-W underscore X view. And so the X view is however many pixels X is, uh, in the game. And so it's going to always be in the same place. So this is the most left position. Uh, so the top left position is going to be view underscore Y view. And that will always be the top left position. It won't go off the screen as we move to the right uh, in the game. And what are we going to display? Let's display a little Mario for each life. So if I've got three lives, three Mario sprites should appear in the top left corner. But just to make things a little better, I'm going to um, put it just slightly uh, 16 pixels added from the top left uh, corner because I don't want it, the sprite to be kind of jammed in the top corner. And same, I'm going to put about 32 uh, down, um, or no, I think just 16 down uh, as well. So it's not jammed in the top corner. It's a little, you know, 16 by 16 uh, border from the top. The other things I want to do, now I need to go to the draw tab. 
So in the draw tab, which is uh, the last tab, I want to do a couple things. I'm going to change um, the color of uh, the text. So I'm going to make it, uh, my background's blue, so maybe I'll make the text white. Uh, you can play with whatever color you want. So that's how you change color. Um, I'm going to draw uh, some text on the screen. So I take the uh, A tool and I say what text do I want to draw and I'm going to type the word coins uh, colon. And what is the X position? Again, view underscore X view. And I might add 150 pixels now because again, there's going to be a couple of Mario sprites to show me how many lives I have. And the Y position, um, again, I could put it down, uh, this time I might put it down 32 because um, just the lettering is, is a different size than the, um, the sprite of Mario. So I'm going to put it down a little bit more of a, a buffer there to center it. I'll play around with those numbers. They may not be perfect. I'll play around with them. You can change the font. If I wanted to, I could put a different font. But for now, I'm just trying to be quick here and, and get this done. The last thing I want to do is I want to draw a variable. And in the draw tab, there's no draw a variable. So I need to go back to the variables. Um, which is in the fourth tab. And you'll notice all the things that you draw are yellow and they can only happen in a draw event. So you can't draw them unless they're in a draw event. So again, I've got a draw event. I'm gonna draw this time the variable called coins. And notice I don't have to say game controller coins because I'm already in object game controller. And again, I just put it in view underscore uh, X view. Um, plus now I'm going to move it over for the spacing of the letter coin. So maybe about 200 and view underscore Y view and maybe just 32 pixels down. Okay. And so that's going to draw those there. Now I'm, I'm sort of ready to start this out. Um, let's go to my start room. And the last thing I need to do is actually put the game controller. So I'm going to just click right here and I've got the game controllers added to the start room as well. And the reason, again, it has to be in the start room is because it's got a create event. And so I don't want to create it in um, my, this room. So I don't want to put the object in this room. And so to do that, I made it persistent. And so it's going to exist in that room. So it'll keep track of lives and it'll keep track of drawing. But it's not going to be created with three lives every time. So I'll hit play. And there's going to be one slight thing I'm going to change. And I'll show you that here real quick. When I hit play, you'll see that I've got the three lives and obviously there's no coins. Uh, so it's, it, uh, it hasn't drawn anything, but I've, I've got to sort of fix uh, that up as well. So I don't want to draw anything on this room. In fact, I don't want to draw until I start getting into this room. And um, you know, uh, now you can see the coins are there. So what I'm going to do, just a quick fix. You don't really have to do it. It may not really bother you uh, to do that. But what I can do, it's a real easy fix, is I'm going to say, if there's a previous room, in other words, besides the start room, besides the first room, draw all this stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, a set of blocks because I want to draw all this stuff if I'm not in the start room. So basically, if a previous room exists, uh, so in other words, you're not in the start room, draw all these things. Great. So that will work just perfect. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make a checkpoint. So if we take a look at uh, the game here, and um, I haven't shown this yet, but as the game goes on, um, I might have a tricky spot that, you know, is sort of hard to, I might put like 20 Goombas. So let me put some uh, uh, Goomba walls here. So I'll put a Goomba wall here, and, and now I'll stick a whole slew of Goomba. And this might be kind of a challenge to get through this, all these Goombas. How are you going to get through this section of Goombas? And so I want to make a challenge. And so what I'm going to do is if you get through this part, I'm going to make an object that you're going to collide with that will be my new checkpoint. And if I die, um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll stick another Goomba up here, actually. Uh, I'll stick a Goomba here, and um, I'll make that Goomba right here. And so if, if I manage to get past here, I'm going to restart uh, the game um, perhaps right here, uh, which is, let's take a look at the coordinate. The coordinates, if you look at the bottom of my screen where it says X and Y, 
the coordinates are 1,008 for x and 384 for y. I'll show you where you, where you see that. See, see where that was? Okay, so how are we going to get Mario to start at these different places? And it's actually going to be quite easy. What we're going to do is I'm going to go back to the game controller. And in the create event, I'm going to make variables. And a variable is going to be Mario underscore x. And its value is going to be um, not very big. Uh, let's go and say uh, 26. Um, so when it's created, and let's actually just see where Mario should be. So right here, you can see the x is 80 and the y is 160. So I want the Mario x to be 80 when the game starts and 160 for y. So let's go back to game controller. Uh, so create, I make a variable Mario underscore x and the x coordinate is 80 pixels. So I want Mario to start at x at 80. And then I'm gonna make the variable uh, Mario underscore y. And I think the value for that I thought was 160. So that's where I want Mario to start when the game starts. And so what we're going to do is in object Mario, when he's created, so anytime the room restarts, so you die and you come back, what I want to do is I wanna say jump to a position. So in the create event, where do I want the jump to go? I want it to go Mario underscore X and the Y position to be Mario underscore Y. But now these aren't Mar object Mario variables. These are game controller variables. So I need to type in game controller dot Mario X position. The Y is gonna jump to not the object Mario because there's no Mario dot Y in, uh, variable in, in Mario. It's gonna go to game controller uh, um, position okay and so remember uh, we made mario x and mario y and game controller so in the creative game controller we've already made where mario is going to start and so when mario is created he's going to jump to that position super so how do i get him to jump so when the room restarts how do i change oops that's not in the create event uh whoops yes that is in the create event yes jump to the mario x and y positions so how do I get those Mario X and Y positions to change? Well, what I'm going to do is, where did I make that spot? Oh, I made it just over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, another object, and I'll call this object uh, checkpoint number one. So checkpoint one. And what's going to happen I can use the, uh, I'll use a Goomba wall sprite, or maybe, yeah, uh, I'll use the sprite wall. That's an easier one to see. So basically, if, um, if I'm going to collide anywhere here, if I go past this wall, this object checkpoint wall, so I'm going to say Mario has a collision with the checkpoint wall, what I want to do is I want to change the variables around. And so I go to variables, and I set the variable called game controller dot Mario underscore X to be a position that's over here somewhere. And I said that 1,008, um, oops, a value of 1,008 because that's how far when I went across the game, you can see this is 720, but I wanted to go a little farther than that. So 1,008 for X. Um, and then I want to set a variable called um, game controller dot Mario underscore Y. And I'm going to say that that value was something like 384. And so now Mario is going to be in that position when I hit the game controller. Now, all I need to do with the game controller is I need, to, it doesn't have to be visible, um, but it has to exist. Um, and it obviously is not solid. I want him just to go through it and you, you won't know what happened. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the checkpoint one right here and I'll make a whole wall. So basically if I go past this point, I'm going to have to have hit this checkpoint. And once I hit this checkpoint, if I die, the game is going to restart and Mario's going to start at this position. Okay. So let's take a, a little look here and uh, test this out. 
and hopefully everything works. You've got checkpoints, you've got a start screen, and um, uh, so that looked good. This part looks good. Uh, I'm going along. This looks good. And now I'm, oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't quite get that right, so I need to do a little fixing. But you see, if I can get past this point, which actually was quite easy, uh, if I die, oh, I better die here. You're going to see I'm going to start the game now at this position. Oh. And I would have to uh, make it so Goomba's not going to hit me right away. So I should have uh, maybe made Mario start a little bit more to the right. But you can see it works.